It's difficult to work on the human brain for several reasons. First of all, it develops in the uterus when the embryo is developing. And as a consequence, it's not very easily accessible at the early stages of development. And then on top of all that, it develops rather slowly over a period of months. So we've chosen to work on a, what's called popularly in science a model system, the uh, frog nervous system. And this is quite attractive because the fertilization of the eggs occurs externally, uh, it, typically in pond water. Here, of course, we do it artificially in the lab. Unemployment, lost productivity, and lost contributions to the community are typical and usually uncounted costs of homelessness, and they be, can be addressed with an integrated strategy. Integrated housing also addresses environmental and sustainability challenges. We incorporate green design principles to create healthier buildings for our residents and staff, limit emissions, and contain energy costs to preserve affordability and reduce the impact of our buildings on the environment and the opportunity for mutually beneficial public-private collaborations. Across the world, people have been watching the choice that Britain has made. I would reassure those markets and investors that Britain's economy is fundamentally strong. And I would also reassure Brits living in European countries and European citizens living here that there will be no immediate changes in your circumstances. There will be no initial change in the way our people can travel, in the way our goods can move, or the way our services can be sold. We must now prepare for a negotiation with the European Union. This will need to involve the full engagement of the Scottish, Welsh and Northern Ireland governments to ensure that the interests of all parts of our United Kingdom are protected and advanced. Tsunamis are very rare and roughly six major tsunamis occur each century. It is believed that 65 million years ago, a tsunami was triggered by a meteoroid at the tip of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, which led to extinction of terrestrial dinosaurs. Many major tsunamis took place after that. But talking of 21st century, a major tsunami in the Pacific Ocean was triggered by an earthquake in southern Peru on June 23, 2001. A more devastating tsunami in the Indian Ocean hit 11 countries including Indonesia, Thailand, Sri Lanka and southeastern India on December 26, 2004. It was triggered by an earthquake of magnitude 9.0, the second largest earthquake ever recorded on a seismograph, and it killed about 150,000 people.
I believe listening skills need to be both taught and practiced. A good listener must be physically and mentally prepared to listen. One must practice focusing on what is being said with undivided attention. This means that you should forget all the little or even not so little things which come into your mind and focus entirely on what the person is saying. A lot of times, people experience absent mindedness. They begin to listen to someone speak, and in the course of their listening, random thoughts start invading their minds. What is not said sometimes is just as important as what is being said. I'm making a reference, of course, to inferences. Those are things which are not said, but can be deduced or suggested from what the speaker is saying. If you're interested in protecting the biosphere, you ought to get on with that job. You shouldn't be distracted by the equally significant but different agendas of, of reducing poverty. Poor people should not pay the price for biodiversity protection. Well, it's about whether you can achieve uh, a win-win solution, whether you can achieve economic growth, which brings wealth, uh, in order to cut uh, poverty uh, without damaging biodiversity. And the argument is uh, that you, if you want to protect biodiversity, you have to focus on that as a goal. Uh, but if you do that, you, have, you run the risk of hurting the poor, and you also run the risk of uh, inconveniencing or reducing economic growth. Um, so when we talk about the polar regions, just to clarify exactly what we mean, um, we have first of all the Arctic at the top of the Earth and the Antarctic at the bottom. Um, so the Arctic was named um, after the Greek word for bear. Now surprisingly it's not after the polar bears that live in the, uh, live in the Arctic, um, but it's after the little and great bear constellations that can be seen in the sky. Um, now the Greeks also hypothesised that there would be an anti-Arctic, which is how we get the name Antarctica. Um, but, of course, it wasn't discovered until much later on. Now, these regions are opposite in many ways other than just their names and their location on the globe. A case of the inner doubts can strike at any moment. One second you might be high on life and feeling unstoppable. But the next, you're paralyzed with the fear of failure. In most cases, a self-confidence deficiency is a simple problem to fix. In others, believing in yourself can seem like a monumental challenge. Self-confidence is a part of your mental health and well-being. It's based on your perceptions and the way that you think about yourself or your abilities. But remember, your own thoughts can be flawed. That's why it's important to always remember that self-confidence is rarely related to your actual skills or abilities, it's actually all in your head.
Vladimir Putin has taken the next step in his move to forcibly annex four Ukrainian regions by signing into law measures approved by Russia's parliament. This action coming as Russia is losing ground in the very regions Moscow is claiming as its own. Ukrainian troops are making significant gains amid a powerful advance in the south, where Ukraine says Russian forces are leaving mines in villages as they retreat. President Volodymyr Zelensky says his troops are pushing even further towards the Russian-occupied city of Kherson. This as Ukrainian forces raise the nation's flag over more liberated towns, and one official says troops are breaking through Russian defences in the Kherson region. Mars is an obvious first choice for space exploration. It's the planet closest to Earth, and there are already plans to take a mission with a human crew there in the near future. While sending a human to Mars would mean the realisation of the dreams of several generations, there are more sensible scientific reasons why it's worth exploring the Red Planet. It may help us to understand our own history, we know that in the past, Mars was covered in water and that it has, over time, experienced huge climate change, so there is something for us to learn there. Mars may also be able to give us new insights into some of the biggest challenges that we face, Mantelpieces and fireplaces have been a central feature of many people's homes throughout much of our recent history. Although mantelpieces are used for storage, they also hold many personal memories in the objects placed on them. In the past, fireplaces were in the centre of the room and were the place where the household met together. Later, they were moved against the wall under mantelpieces for practical reasons, and together this position not only made them a noticeable feature, but also a place where people expressed their identity and taste. Mantelpieces became a way for the rich to impress others by arranging expensive ornaments to show off their fashionable tastes. We see this in the 19th century, where objects were arranged carefully and symmetrically to show prosperity and position in society. When something you order arrives on your doorstep, do you ever think about the journey it took to get there? That book you ordered online, or that new dining table, everything that arrives in your home started somewhere else, often somewhere a long way away. And the companies that send these products to us need to put a lot of thought into how they transport their goods to our homes. In the past, Cost and speed were the main factors in this decision-making. If companies needed products to arrive very quickly, they would be likely to choose to transport them by air. 
When time was less of a concern, or if cost was the primary concern, companies would usually have their goods transported by ship across the sea, or on trains across land.